Congratulations on the film. It's wonderful. Thank you. Tell me, um, how did the project originally come about? Uh, it's uh, it's pretty regular, but at the same time, the most of things that happened uh, happened not with me, not com like, but not it was with my scriptwriter. My script, like the scriptwriter is, um, uh, his name is Mateusz Patsevich. He was 18 years old when he became obsessed with cases of fake priests in Poland, apparently, mm. and I didn't know that. Uh, this is the Polish phenomenon. Um, I, I, it's, it's apparently the, the thing in Poland. Um, we have like several cases each year. Um, so he uh, started to research it when he was 18 years old, and he reached out to, the, to one guy particularly who was um, a fake priest for four months in a rural smaller community, very re religious one in <laughs> Poland during Corpus Christi uh, holiday, in uh, which takes place usually around May or June. Okay. So, so he wrote an article about it, and he was approached by uh, another producer, uh, and Christoph Rack, a pretty renowned one, who, mm. who uh, read the, the article, and he wanted to acquire rights uh, t to make make a film mm. out of the article. And, and, and Mateusz said, you know, let me let me write it myself hmm. uh, with your with your supervision. And the two worked on the on on it on the project for a few years. And then Krzysztof, I know I knew Krzysztof from from before, so he sent me uh, the first draft, and hmm. he wanted to hear my thoughts. So I gave them my notes. I I was so excited about the script that I gave them like usually when I'm excited. I write an extent, very, very like extensive, thorough email uh, detailing, you know, all the means and what I what I would see here and there. So I wrote them this long, long email, and afterwards they went silent. So I <laughs> thought, oh my god, this, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> They're gonna probably move to another director who's much, who's probably much more. I don't know, eligible who would go by the book and just make this film. And after three months, they've sent me the revised version of the script, which was great. And I really wanted, I, and not only I saw the film, my film in it, but I also wanted to m meet the guy who wrote it. And that's how I met Mateusz, with whom I've already made the second film as well. And okay. So, yeah. So this is definitely this is based on a true story or loosely based on a true story. Loosely based, um, it's inspired by, and mm -hmm. we can say it's based because we've added and I've asked uh, the scriptwriter to enrich and and spotlight, especially uh, the uh, the uh, accident mm -hmm. case, which is, which is the core second act. Um, event and situation around which the whole thing circle cir circulates, and uh, the juvenile detention center part, which is also added. And I just, you know, I said to, I, I told them to just make it bigger and much more significant. So thanks to these, uh, the film is very different from what really happened. Okay, great, great, great. Um, how did you discover Bartosz Bellinia? Bartosz is pretty well known in Poland among the theater fans mm -hmm. because he's, uh, he took to the stage when he was very young. Then he became this uh, theater phenomenon. Um, because of his characteristic looks, um, he the, the cinema usually hired him as a villain, cuckoo, you know, psycho, <laughs> and so and Mateusz is like, sorry, 
and Bartosz is uh, is a guy who usually is very hipster-ish looking. He mm-hmm. he has long hair, um, not pretty like not a big guy, a, like sweater, you know, a dog, <laughs> hipster <laughs> hipster coffee shops, etc. <laughs> so and so the thing is, I I knew about. I knew of him, I didn't know him, um, and he, the other guy, um, whose name, oh, he, he plays Pincher in the film, it's the sidekick char- character, okay. he, he was meant to play the main character, the main, uh, the Daniel part in our film, Thomas because he's a, huge, he's, he's a huge star. That's uh, Tomas Zitek? Who played uh, Pinter? Uh, Pinter, yes, he he's the he's the main guy. So he we he was actually because in order to um, to get money from Polish Film Institute, so even before the casting be- begins, you have to put some names on the paper and tell to Polish Film Institute how you see the cast in the film. Mm-hmm. So I've put the Pinter's. Um, actor name on the paper. I asked him, obviously, is it okay that I put your name now, but I would have to um, Mm -hmm. run this casting anyway. And he said, sure, let's do it. So we ran auditioning process and Mm -hmm. Bartosz came up and he was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But because he wasn't, like, that's the funniest part. I gave two um two tasks um to like to to, to perform for the, all these actors. They all came. It was mm-hmm. like 300 people uh, during wow. the process. Yeah. And they were already sur- selected. It wasn't random. So and we were I asked them to perform like to conduct a mass a service like in a, in a church in mm-hmm. their own words like a sermon huh. uh, and also to sing mm-hmm. so that was one part sort of trying to become a priest and the other one was to express you know the huge anger fury like like fury to- towards the camera mm-hmm. as if the camera was their partner who Turned them in at the police station. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the other part was more like streetwise, okay. and usually the the actors split in two. One part was great at one of these tasks. Mm-hmm. So Bartosz wasn't great at none of these. Uh-huh. Okay, that's the funniest part. Like he was like sixty percent okay with being a priest and with being, and he was the only one to actually do it. And he was so interesting in it because the main character in Corpus Christi is neither a priest uh, or a, um, um, a hoodlum. Right. So he was he was perfect for the role. Nice, nice. And yeah, I, I totally agree with you. He just he brought a, a great strength to the role. It was just a very rich performance. Um, yeah. I'm curious, Jen, are, are you religious at all? I was religious as probably most of people in Poland, Catholic country, especially growing up in 80s and 90s. Hmm. It was coming, like stepping away from communism into capitali- capitalism. Hmm. And during communism, church was had a very significant role in Poland um was like a haven for intellectuals um artists my parents a lot of my my parents friends my parents my father is an actor my my mother sang gospel music um so the the whole you know so, so the bohemian uh, environment in Poland could gather in church and freely independ- independently talk about everything without mm. being uh without notion of being spied upon uh, mm. in church 
So church was dif different. And after 1989, when the wall collapsed, mm. um, and, you know, the Iron Curtain went down, mm. uh, the church lost, lost, has lost it, um, its, you know, special role, um, yeah. special character, and now it's like everywhere else. So it's very different now, and unfortunately, church became um, this, um, uh, you know, like a pendulum. It it swung toward towards um, far right nationalistic parties, mm -hmm. and, and because it was it's so closely affiliated with pol politics, people just withdrew from church. Uh, many mm. many years ago, so I can't consi consider myself religious. I'm mm. a spiritual being, <laughs> so but not religious. I I don't think so. No. Okay. So you don't uh, inject the film with any of your personal feelings or anything like that. Personal messages. I'm not trying to. Obviously, it's impossible, probably, for a director to sort of hide his own standpoint mm -hmm. so and at a certain level it's it's you know it's not healthy for the film even you should be very aware of every standpoints mm -hmm. uh, every uh, each of uh, every one of the stand, standpoints you you have like the characters in my film I was trying to be very close to what they think and sort of to understand everyone, even the, the disgruntled part of the ca the, the the character's mm -hmm. um, realm. So everyone everyone's needs and motivations are pretty, I think, um, hmm. uh, clear mm -hmm. and understandable. But uh, I was trying to be sort of transparent with my beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, but the only like so so my only um, like pro as a director, my only standpoint there is, if there is one in the film, is the one that uh, the society, in order to to get together, has to sort of face its own wrongdoings. And in doing so, sometimes it needs a therapist. Hmm. Uh, I like that. And yeah, as we all do sometimes. <laughs> it might be a friend, it might be a friend, a close person, a therapist, whoever. Hmm. But uh, but we have to face what we've what we've what we've done done wrong in the past, right. and or you know confront our what's what's hurtful for us uh okay. as well so so that's like i think that's the core part of the film okay terrific terrific and you shot this i believe in the polish countryside yes it's um it's like this we call it the bible both of poland hmm. it's the southeastern part of poland actually where my my father was born up far from the actual place we've shot in mm -hmm. so um so this is this is the part like we've moved the, the the original story um set set uh the place of the original story was closer to warsaw which is the central part mm -hmm. of poland we've mm -hmm. moved to the bible Belt, which is southeast a uh, very conservative, very religious, com smaller communities scattered around mountains. Hmm. So we went to, uh, we were shooting in very picturesque um, village and, you know, catching, capturing surroundings as well. And this, uh, this people from the village were, were pretty suspicious. <laughs> because we came from this very like very like very non-religious uh, mm. uh, big city, right. <laughs> left this liberal bubble, right. so they kept asking uh, uh, me questions about my mo motivation, mm. who's like if the film is inspired by a true story and where did the story happen. I even, you know, at the beginning of the of the process of of you know finding the lo 
location. I've organized a meeting with the local social club run mm. by like these powerful women from the village. Okay. Uh, um, knowing that probably the social club, this woman, are uh, actually they are the one wielding power. <laughs> mm. So in the village, not the mayor or the the local priest. And so and they were interrogating me for two hours, being very nice and welcoming, but at the same time very precise mm. on what the story was about, etc. So then I, when the meeting was finished, I went on and and had some other meeting with uh, with a woman who who was leading this cultural center in the region mm-hmm. and I told her that I had the meeting with this woman and she said oh I know them and mm-hmm. what did they tell what 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 did they tell you and I told her like I was being interrogating especially about this fake priest <laughs> and I told her that one of their comments was it's impossible that this priest wasn't checked upon for mm-hmm. three months, and it's just impossible. It's just like usually, you know, nobody would get fooled for three months <laughs> by the by a fake priest. And right. this woman said, "Well, you know, you should know that they were asking you these questions because we had a fake priest for two years here." <laughs> So that's a common thing, fake priests. Yeah. So I we and we didn't know that. So they were probably very kind of like they were probably terrified with us coming into their village uh, to to destroy the reputation of the village by showing a fake priest in it for three months. Wow. That is so, bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh my they were God. protecting the reputation. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so, Jan, how, how can people see this wonderful film? Um, the reactions were pretty, uh, you know, enthusiastic in Poland. We, mm-hmm. till this day, it's, the f- it's four weeks after, since the opening. So, mm. we are happy to, you know, to... to to learn yesterday we were we, we learned that it it's 1.3 million admissions domestically okay. nice. so it's a huge number as for this small you know intimate film it's not a huge it's not a blockbuster it's not a genre film mm. it's uh it's a it's a more festival art house mm-hmm. you know we were lucky to be selected by the Oscar committee domestically oh, wow. That'd be amazing. So so it's great. But one point three million it just doesn't happen. It's mm-hmm. you know, it's amazing. So we're still like we're still overwhelmed by it by it and mm-hmm. we, uh, you know enthusiastic and on the far, far, far my own right and mm-hmm. orthodox very among orthodox people, fundamentalists this film is offending, like it's offensive. Um, mm-hmm. They 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 feel this film is too playful with profane, mm. okay. and you know mixing sac- sacred and profane. So mm. they are not so easy with the film. But most of people, especially moderate. Um, yeah. re- moderately religious people are like, yeah, this is the thing. Like, this is what all we, what we all feel about church today. Like, the church right. became so political. Actually, my uh, a, a few days ago, my friend wrote me that she was trying to get the ticket for the screening, and she couldn't do it because the whole room was filled with nuns. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it was it was funny to envision. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. Uh, well, Jan, I want to thank you for your time today. Um, the film is just great. I think everyone should go see it. It it you know it's powerful. It's moving. It's well acted. It's shot brilliantly. 
and um, just the visual style alone is amazing. So congratulations on a, on a job well done. Thank you so much, Randy.